pretty good. Hello. Good evening. It's just 8 o'clock here. Oh, I'm sorry. I gotta watch this table. I have a new table. And um, it's an old wooden table and it has wheels and it moves a little. And I have my, uh, my phone stand and my ring light set up on top of the table so if I move it too much it's going to shake my phone. Um, this is my first time using this setup so I might have to make some changes I guess. But thank you all for joining me tonight. Um, I am wiggling this phone like crazy. Let's see, let me think here. I hope maybe I'll just try to stay off the table so I don't wiggle it all night. But if you're joining us here, um, this is Needle Felting 101. Tonight we're going to be talking about all the tools for needle felting. Um, so let me know. I'm going to watch the comments and I'm going to I'm gonna post the link to this video on my event first. But let me know. Are you guys, um, have you done any needle felting before? Are you brand new to it? Um, post a comment there. Make sure my comments are working today. And let me know where you're from, too. I know we had some international um, group members that were going to be joining us or watching the replay. Um, let's see. See, my live feed is a little fuzzy. I uh, am using my Wi-Fi, but let me see if I can get my data. Hmm. We'll see if my data is any better. Oh, it turned me green. Alright, that looks a little better. I For the last couple months, um, my I've had like almost no service on my cell at home, but our Wi-Fi has been, it works, but it's not great. I mean, I'm one of those that we live in the country and we don't have great service. We get what we get and that's pretty much it. So, I... Um, I have Verizon. My husband has AT&T and he has better service than me. So I might have to get AT&T soon. But he is um, harvesting right now and we don't have time. <laughs> so well, let me look at some of these comments here before we get started. I see we have a lot of people joining. So if you're just joining, um, comment on the video here. Let me know. Um, how new you are to needle felting, where you're from. Hi, Melissa, Deborah, brand new, Vicki, Amber. Hello. All right, well, send me a comment if you guys don't know how to comment on the live videos, um, depending on your phone. You might have to swipe one way or the other, but you should be able to comment right as you're watching. Hi, Janet and Shirley. Brand new and so curious. Good. Needle felting is a lot of fun. You can do lots of different things with it. So, well, anyways, um, I'm sure there's lots of people I haven't um, seen before on here. So, I will introduce myself like I'm brand new. Um, I am, uh, I will be 24 next month. Um, I live in Michigan with my husband. We're in the thumb. And we have five dogs. Um, and we raise sheep. I'm a full-time farmer and fiber artist, mostly in the wintertime. Um, so, we, we have about 100 sheep right now. Um, we'd like to grow more, but um, confines of building space does make a difference in that. So we are where we are. Um, we raise a few different breeds of sheep. We have uh, more commercial type sheep for market value. Um, so we take the lambs to market mostly. But I also do have some more fiber animals. Um, so we have lots of we have lots of different crossbreeds. Um, mostly like Suffolk and Hampshire and Dorset crosses. 
Those are our main breeds for the commercial sheep. Um, and then for the fiber sheep, um, I am going more into Dorsets um, and Romney and um, BFL. I just acquired a new BFL ram this year, so we'll be having some of his new babies um, in January, hopefully. Ultrasounds are next Monday, actually. So hopefully everybody's bride will cross our fingers and then the lambing should start sometime in the beginning of January. So that's always an exciting time. Very busy. I live in my pajamas pretty much and go and see the sheep all day long um, and come home and work on fiber stuff in the meantime. So it's pretty nice. All right. Let's see who else is joined. Gina, Shaniqua, Susan, hello. Great, I'm so glad you guys all found it. I know sometimes it's tricky to find the videos. Facebook is just strange. So anyways, let's get started. If you guys have any questions along the way, feel free to comment at any time. I have my laptop and my phone. I can see comments. Um, so yeah. And if you're watching this on the replay, um, you can also comment and I will look back Again, um, I'm hopefully going to post this to my YouTube channel and my main business page at some point. So we'll see. All right. So we're going to start talking about needle felting tools. We're going to go to the real basics and we're going to um, take another step each week. So this is part one of three parts. Um, part two and three will be the next two following weeks. Same day, same time, Monday, 8 p.m. Eastern. So, um, we're going to start by talking about felting needles. So, there are a few different types of felting needles. Um, they come in different sizes, which is the diameter of the needle. Um, you can also kind of refer to it as a gauge of the needle. So, the higher the number is, the finer the needle. Um, so, they have sizes... 32, 36, 38, 40, and 42. So 42 is going to be your finest needle and 32 is going to be your more coarse needle, your thicker needle, which, you know, looking at them to the human eye, I can't see a difference. Um, these are, there's like two or three different sizes here. I just have some that I've been working with recently. These are felting needles, so they are made of um, a metal. I don't know what kind of metal, they're probably different, but they're about, I would say, three inches long. So usually all felting needles kind of look like this. This one I um, painted the tip of it to know what size it is, but so this is the top. This is where you hold on to it if you just use the needle. And then down here at the end, this is very sharp. So one of the things about felting is you want to stay up to date on your tetanus shot because you will stab your fingers. I have done it so many times. Um, so be careful when you're felting. So I really apologize if the phone moves a lot. I have a new setup and I might have to adjust it a little bit after this one. But I'm trying it out this time. All right, so from here on the needle, so about two thirds of the way down, from here to the tip, it has um, what are called barbs. So I, you can't really see it. I don't think, oh, you might be able to see it a little bit. I don't think my phone's gonna focus on it. But if you can see like the difference in like a shiny part on the needle or something like that. Those are where the barbs are. So the barbs, what they do is they grab the wool fibers and entangle them with the other wool fibers. So all you do is you stab the wool and it tangles it all together. So that's what felting is. It's when fibers get tangled up together. So all you do is push the needle into the wool and it felts it. So like commercial type felt, they have these machines that do it and have a bunch of needles on them in felt fiber. 
So that's what a needle looks like. So remember 32 is your bigger needle. So the bigger needle is the more coarse. I say coarse when I refer to needles, coarse and fine. Um, this is a more coarse, this is probably a 36. Um, so the coarser your needle is, the heavier weight or heavier, bigger size it is. Um, it, what it does is it grabs more of the fibers and felt it a little bit denser as well. So we'll talk more about that. Um, and then 42 would be your finest. So I used a finer needle for real um, detailed work. That's pretty much what I use it, the differences. So um, if you have my, I know this is backwards, but um, I do have a printout available for needle felting um, tools information. If you would like one, please um, comment or message me your email address because I can't send it on Facebook any, um, anyhow that I have found yet. So send me your email. Don't um, comment your email on this post just to keep your privacy safe. Um, but you can message me your email address and I can email that to you. Um, but I'm going to go through a little bit on this today. So there are different types of felty needles. Um, the main types that you'll see is a triangle, a star, a spiral, and a reverse needle. So a triangle, um, what that is, is the needle it has three sides so pretty simple um, each side has the barbs that felt the wool um, they're a great versatile needle I use the triangles a lot um, generally the triangles I use are 36 or 38 they're a great overall needle um, yeah yeah, great overall use needle. That's about what I think about the triangles. They're great. Um, a star. Now, a star has four sides. So the star will felt wool most densely. Um, and as you start needle felting, you'll kind of see the difference um, when you have different types of needles. You can feel the difference when you're felting. Um, so it's just something you kind of get a feel for along the way. Um, I honestly, I don't use a star at all. Um, I just use my triangle and I love those. Um, it's kind of a personal opinion sometimes. So you just kind of got to, you know, try something out and use it and see how you like it. Um, the next type of needle is a spiral. So spirals are also my best friends. So I do a lot of, um, well, I don't do a lot anymore, but I do do um, like dog portraits. I've done a lot in the past. Um, I don't have any other ones here because I don't do any of mine. I just do it for other people. <laughs> um, so I use them for real detailed work. So like when I'm trying to make a little bitty circle or a little bitty detail on a dog's face, something like that, um, I will use spirals. So the reason they're called a spiral is because the needle is actually spiraled from where the barbs start to the tip and it spirals. So when you're looking at felting needles, it's really easy to tell um, a spiral needle. Um, I haven't used star needles before, but if I hold my spiral and my triangle next to each other, I can tell the difference. I was just looking at these guys because one of my triangles looks a little uh, bent. So the other thing about felty needles is that they do wear out. So you're going to have to um, get new felty needles. You're going to have to change them out. Um, they do go dull like anything else that you um, that's sharp, like scissors. Sometimes you have to sharpen your scissors. So same thing, but use a different needle. Um, okay, last type of needle is called a reverse needle. So reverse needles have um, 
the barbs on the needle, but they are faced opposite direction. So you can't really see the barbs, um, but if you run your finger on them, you can feel them. If you run your finger on the needle, you feel the barbs there. They don't hurt you as long as you don't hit, don't stab your finger with the point. Um, but the reverse one is the opposite way. So it actually, when you push it into the wool, it pulls the wool fibers back out. So those are really popular for um, making like fur on an animal. Um, I've seen them used a lot like for 3D animals and whatnot. If you want to make it look furry, that's another way of doing it. Um, I haven't used one before. I'm real simple. I like my triangle and I like my spiral. Easy. So those are the main types of felty needles. Um, a couple tips. Like I said, your needles will go dull. So change them out. Um, when working with projects, generally, if you're using, um, if you're making like a 3D object, like here's one of my gnomes. These guys, these are 3D needle felting, um, and then 2D. So this is like a wool painting. So if you're making a 3D object, I always recommend starting with a, um, a bigger needle. I don't go lower than a 36. I don't really use the 32s. Um, I use a 36 and a 38 interchangeably, but use a 38. And then if you get down to like a more detailed part on here, you can use a spiral. Um, these guys, these are pretty simple. I usually use the same needle for the whole project. Um, here's another different gnome. Sometimes I'll use a spiral for trying to um, felt these little circles or these lines for the garland on here. Um, on my 2D um, wall paintings, I'll use um, like a 36 or a 38 like on all this background here. And then um, close up if you're looking at the detail, like for the nose, trying to get that fine defined lines. Um, the texture on my cow here, I'll use a spiral needle sometimes. Depends what I'm working on. So use, when you start a project, always use a larger size needle. If you use um, like a 40 or 42 when you're starting a project, it's going to take you forever because it doesn't felt as much as the 36 or 32 or a 38 does. I don't see any questions yet, but if you do have questions, just let me know. Okay, so... Oh, for 2D felting, I'm just looking at my list so I don't miss important things I want to tell you. So for 2D felting, um, don't go any bigger of a needle than a 36. Remember when I say bigger, the number is less. So 32 is bigger than a 36. 36 is bigger than a 38. But um, for 2D paintings, I don't go bigger than um, like a 36. Because they... So what the 2D paintings do is depending on the type of um, background fabric you use, it's going to pull the wool kind of through. So you're kind of going to see a reverse image on the back. So you don't want to felt too hard through this. Um, the wool that you're felting onto will felt into the fabric. So you don't need to do a real heavy needle. You're not making a really dense, you know, 3D object. Change your needles. Um, needles can break. So when you're first starting out, you're probably going to break a needle or two. Um, I broke a few needles when I first started needle felting. So the biggest things that break needles is if you bend it or you twist it. Um, so when you're felting, you want to push it in and pull it out the same direction. Don't bend your needle. Don't twist your needle. Don't do any weird. You just want to felt 
same direction. Um, I broke off several needles inside of projects that I never got out because I was working on a project, pushed my needle in, it broke off inside and I pulled out half the needle. So it does happen. Be careful. Um, the other thing that breaks needles, some 3D projects, um, depending on the artist, they'll use an armature inside like for animals so you can make them posable. Um, I don't really use the wire armatures, but if you hit those, you can also break your needle very easily. A last tip I have, I said it once before already, if you can get a tetanus shot easily, it wouldn't be a bad idea because these needles are very sharp and you will stab your fingers no matter how hard you try. I have lots of injuries all the time. Um, so just be careful, um, especially when you work with real small pieces like here's my little sheep here. When I'm trying to felt his little legs and you're trying to hold the leg and stab the needle in between your fingers, it happens. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> They do make um, like different, that's one of the things I forgot on the tools list, but I don't use a lot of different tools, a lot of the fancy extra stuff you can buy. Um, I'm very simple, but they do sell like little thimbly type leather things, um, but I find that I can't work with my fingers as well when I have those on, so I don't use them. Um, speaking of tools, so handles. So there's a couple different types of handles that they make for felting needles. Um, I have used several different things over the years. Um, when I'm working on projects now, mostly I just use the single needle in my hand. Um, I am also young and I can do this for long periods of time. Um, but if you deal with different sort of arthritis in your joints, um, you know, same thing with like knitting. It wears on your joints too. Um, so there are different options. The first one um, that's most common is a wooden handle. So this one holds one needle. They do make ones that hold multiple needles. So this guy, this is one of the more simple ones. Um, this is one I got with the kit um, when I first started felting but it has this little groove here and your felting needle will go inside of it. Ooh, I haven't done this in a while. So here's the skinny part goes into the top of the handle. So the needle actually goes right in this groove. And sometimes these are a little bit too small for the needle, but it does want, you want it to hold it. So I got the felting needle in the groove there and then all it does is it slides back up in there and it holds the needle. So I find with these I kind of bend my needles a little bit more when I use them. Um, this one actually is a little bent. So since it's to the one side it's kind of you're going to be more prone to bend it. Um, I think that's why, one of the reasons why I stopped using these. Um, but these is, this is all personal preference. Try it. See what you like. It's all up to you. But when you're using these, same thing. You just got to go same direction, in and out. Easy handle. They are inexpensive. Um, another kind of handle you'll see is there are these fancy like pen type ones so they're like more like the size of a pen and they'll hold your needle I don't know how exactly they work I don't have any um but so it's more ergonomical um so more like a pen it's a little bit bigger instead of the little tiny felty needle you're holding um you can also there are like tutorials and stuff that you can look up how to make um one out of a pen they have to be like the normal like the click type that like unscrew down here and uh, then like you put your needle in it you gotta like shove some wool in it 
I've done it before, used that for a while. Um, and then there are like fancy ones made like especially for needle felting. Um, the other kind of handle is a multi needle needle tool. So this guy, this is I don't remember. I got it on Amazon, super cheap, inexpensive. Um, this one holds seven needles. I only have four needles in here because I put seven needles in here and I could hardly push it into my wool. So I decided to go with four. So the needles, um, they actually, this one on twists at the top. And it has this little um, metal piece here to hold the needles down. Oh, there it goes. And then it holds the needles in there. You put them in from the top. Those are the ones that I painted the tips of. So I have um, like a 36 triangle, I think, of the ones that are in here. So this, I really, really like this one. Um, I did a lot of felting before I got a multi-needle tool and I was really upset that I didn't have it for those many years. <laughs> so I just used a single needle. Um, this has sped up my needle felting tremendously. Um, if you guys are going to join me for my holiday gnome tutorial on Saturday, you will see I felt much faster with this than um, you can with just your one needle. Um, it's very nice. They are inexpensive. I think this one was probably under $10 on Amazon. Um, there's lots of different kinds out there. So again, when you're starting to needle felt, just look around. Um, we don't have a lot of vendors on here on WAPA that do sell like needle felting, like supplies, like single items specifically. Um, most everybody has like kits. Um, so, and I don't sell many items individually. Um, I'll sell like the felty mats individually, but I don't know specifically who to get this stuff from easily. Um, I've struggled with that over the years too. So those are the different types of handles. Um, and the multi-needle one works great for when you're felting large areas. Um, I do use it on my 2D felting. Um, like when I'm felting a big like background piece, like a big one color area. I'll use it. It just speeds the felting up because um, you can cover more area. All right. I'm going to take a little breather. Anybody have any questions? Um, Vicki says, I ordered a beginner's kit and still waiting on it to arrive. It has one of the wooden things in it. Yeah. Um, if you haven't used them before, try it out. See how you like it. Um, needle felting is a lot of what you're comfortable with. Um, so you just got to try things out. All right. If you have any questions, just send me a comment. Um, but the next thing we're going to talk about is felting surfaces. So there's a few different kinds of surfaces. I've got to say I'm kind of opinionated about my felting surfaces. Um, and I don't know. It's, you know, one of those things. It's also a personal preference. Um, but, you know, I have my opinions as well. <laughs> uh, let's see. Amber says, do you only use wool to felt or is it possible with other types of fiber? So I only really use um, wool to felt. Maybe if you gave me an example of the other kinds of fiber you are thinking about. Um, like... So other types of fiber, um, I've only used wool because I haven't really explored anything else. That's a great question. Um, but let me grab something here. And yes, I'm in my pajamas, my pajama bottoms, if you didn't notice yet. It's um, almost my bedtime here in Michigan. It's 8.30 and... It's a little late for me. I like to go to bed at nine. <laughs> um, Amber says, wasn't sure if mohair, alpaca, etc. would have felt. So, mohair and alpaca. Um, you know, I should know the answers to these questions real easily. But there's a lot of things to explore. 
but I also do have some mohair and alpaca right here that we can look at. Um, so besides needle felting, I also make um, spinning and felting bats as well. Um, so I have lots of different types of fibers. Here's some alpaca. And I'm pretty sure like alpaca which is felt just as easily as wool. It's the same, you know, kind of structure. Um, and mohair. I've used mohair before. Oh, right here. So these, this guy has some mohair locks on it. So, and I have felt these very, very securely. So, yes. Most natural types of fibers like this do felt. Um, felting needle right here. So I have my little piece of alpaca here. Oh yes. And I'm stabbing it. It's felting very nicely. So I felted this guy into a little quick ball there. Um, biggest thing with fibers is going to be the quality, of course. Like some breeds um, of sheep don't felt as well as others. So that's something to think about. Well, I have a couple notes on that later. Um, some other like types of fibers. I know some people, this is, um, let's see, this is Angelina. So this is sparkly stuff I put in my bats. Um, and I have used it a little bit before. The thing about this, it's not natural. It's like plastic. So it doesn't felt itself, but like if I put um, like little wool fibers over top of it and kind of felt a little bit over top so you can still see it, um, that does work. You can incorporate it. People use a very wide variety of things while felting. Also depends, you know, what kind of felting. Um, Barbara says, I can't tell about needle size from looking at the needle. I load all the same size and shape into a multi-needle holder. One breaks and I have no idea what to replace it with. And the result is I wind up felting with different sizes. If I order a set of needles, once I take it out and use it, the color code wears off. I have no idea what needle I have. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Question mark. So, um, I mean, I can tell the difference when I'm felting. Um, there should be a big difference between a 36 and a 42 just by the feel of it. Um, the 36 should be a little bit harder to push into your wool than a 42. Um, if you have that big of a difference, depends what you're working on. Um, like the needles I order, I get like a hundred needles in a case. So I can just go to my case and grab a new needle. I always put the same, I always put the same size needles in my multi-needle tool. So these are, I believe a 36 or 38, 38, 36 and 38 triangles are very, very similar. So it doesn't make that big of a difference. Um, but if you're jumping from a 36 to a 42, that does make a big difference. Um, as long as they're all the same type of needle. So as long as they're all stars or, um, triangles, I use triangles. Um, it shouldn't make a difference. It's not going to hurt anything. It just might be the time it takes you to do the project. So am I missing anything? I talked about the different fibers. Um, okay. So felting surfaces. So there are several different types of felting surfaces. Definitely a personal preference. Um, sometimes it depends what project I'm working on. Um, but the most, one of the most popular types is a foam mat. Um, this one is, I think this is like a five inch square or a six inch, I don't remember offhand. Um, but this guy, I buy these in bulk, but they're a special type of foam. They're a high density foam made specifically for needle felting. Um, much different than like your styrofoam that you see at the store. It's squishy doesn't make a lot of noise it does when you're felting but it doesn't make a lot of noise different than your you know 
foam, household sponge, those kind of things do not use. Do not use styrofoam. Do not use something that's not made for felting for foam mat wise because you'll end up doing more harm than good to your work. You want to use one specifically made for felting. Um, if you need these kinds of supplies, I can help you find them. Um, I do have some supplies. Um, I know it's hard to find different supplies, especially depending on um, where you're at. If you're in a different country, it can be difficult. Um, but these are inexpensive. You can get them for under $10. Um, they're very easy to use. Anything else on the foam mats? Um, do to do, do. And there are different types of um, quality in the foam mats. When I first started, I got one and it wasn't as good quality as these are. And it would break off into my wool a lot more. Um, these will break off into your wool. Um, if you felt too much into it, that comes with just learning how to needle felt, um, how far you push your needle into the mat. We'll talk about that more in a little bit. Um, so foam mat, easy, inexpensive, great overall use mat. You can get them in many different sizes. Um, another kind of mat is called a brush mat. I don't have one of these. What it is, is it pretty much has a base a real like thin plastic base and it has like um like plastic brush bristles pretty much sticking up sometimes they're like i don't know a couple inches tall um i don't know how well these things work i've never used one before because they kind of look funny to me um because the bristles just kind of move around and i'm not sure how that works um but they are also an expensive mat you can get um but you can only do well, you can do some 2D felting projects, but I don't trust that your project is going to not move around and shift a lot while you're trying to felt. Um, you can look them up online, a brush mat for needle felting. Um, you do have to clean it between projects. Most of these you need to do some upkeep on. Um, the wool does stick into the mats. So sometimes you have to clean them a little bit. Another type of mat is called, oh, I don't even know how to say this word, um, but it's H-E-S-S-I-A-N, and it's a rice bag. It's a type of the Hessen or whatever, how you pronounce it, I'm not sure. Um, it's a type of material, and what they do is they put rice inside of it, sew up this material around it, um, and use that as a felting mat. Um, you can make it at home or purchase one. You just have to have the right type of material to use. Um, you can make it whatever size you choose. The material will break down over time. Um, and most of these will, you know, they'll have some wear and tear on them. The foam mats, you'll see it and you'll get like different holes and you can see um, wear on it a little bit. Um, they're not great. The rice bags aren't great for like 2D felting because it's kind of bumpy and you're not going to get an even surface over top of it. Um, also one, you can look them up on the internet. Now, my favorite type of felting surface, I, this is my bias here. <laughs> I'm going to warn you. So, um, this is a wool pad or, um, this is a wool pad. So it's thick. It's made completely out of wool. So this one is from Bear Creek Felting. Um, and I really like this one. I started out with one. I don't know where it is at the moment. I tried to find it. Um, it's like, I don't know if it's like half this size or a little bit bigger. This one is, let me get my ruler out here. I really like the size of this one because it's very versatile for the projects I do. I have my big quilting ruler. So this guy is about 12 by six. Oh wait, no, that's a nine. 12 by nine. So it's a really nice size mat. 
Um, they come in many different sizes. These ones are more expensive, um, so you're going to spend a little bit more money on them. They last quite a long time. Um, the first one I got, I felt it like in the same area a lot and it made an indent. It's kind of hard to get the indents out once they're made. Um, so you kind of have to move your project around a lot. That's why a bigger one's nice because I have more space to move it around. And this one um, I've had for like a year, I think. And it's still really, really nice. Um, so it has these thick, like felt kind of sheets on the outside. And then it's stuck with wool on the inside. So it's all wool. Um, it's kind of nice because if you're working on a project, it's going to stay right here. Um, it's not going to go anywhere. It's very flat. This one is. They make some real small ones. Um, if you're working on more like 3D projects, I do a lot of wool painting. So like this one, I can lay it completely out on my mat, my pad here, and I can work on it. Um, and it works very, very nice. It's a great size. These guys, um, remember they're a little bit more expensive. So if you really get a needle felting, they are a nice investment. Um, I like them a lot. They come in many sizes. Most of these pads, mats do. Oh, the wool mat. There's also these um, thinner wool mats. They are, the ones I've seen are like, I don't know, they're less than an inch thick. And they're a really um, compressed like felt um, mat. Um, and just lays flat like on the table. Um, some people will like layer them, but you can't push your needle very far into it because it will go into whatever service you have underneath of you. Can you give us the name of the company that the mat comes from? This one, um, this is from Bear Creek Felty. They have a few different sizes. Um, I think, I'm trying to dig in my brain, my needle felting brain here, on our Waffa vendors. Um, I believe the general bean, she's in Canada. Um, she does do, I think, the wool mats, I believe. Um, and I don't know if anybody else has them that's in the Waffle group. Um, yeah. Great question. All right. So that's about it for the different felting surfaces. I'm going to talk a little bit about 2D felting and the backgrounds you can use. So I use, I've used a few different type of background pieces. So when you're doing um, 2D felting, you have to have something to felt onto. So this white right here, that is a piece of fabric. Um, that is, so this is a pre-felt. So what pre-felt is, is it's pretty much in the process of making felt, but it's not quite very dense yet. Um, but this is a pre-felt sheet. So pre-felt stretches. One thing I've learned about pre-felt, I've used it, and um, it can be difficult if you're working on a project that you need to keep nice and square um, and proportional. You have to be very careful when using these. Um, it can pull apart even like, I can make a hole. So, this is pre-felt. Um, you can use it. It's pretty nice. It's more on the inexpensive side compared to um, like felt, well, actual wool felt. But I like wool because I know my fibers are going to felt into it and it's going to work how I need it to. Like I showed you before, on this pre-felt piece, you can see the fibers on the back. This is the back side. This is the front. So you can see the different colors of wool that have come through and felted. Um, another type of background piece is just regular wool felt fabric. This is some new stuff I just got. Um, this is just a white. I don't have a small piece cut off, so I have like my whole, I think I have like two yards here. Um, the actual felt fabric is usually thinner, so it's a smaller profile, and it's very sturdy and thick doesn't stretch as much it has a little give but not very much just like like regular fabric um 
does has a little bit of give. This one doesn't have much. So it's kind of nice. Same type of stuff, you know, you'd use like to make wool clothing out of. So that's um, very nice to use. It doesn't shift. Um, and then for other types of fabrics. So I've used um, a couple different types of fabrics along my way. Um, if you see in the event, I did post a picture of one of my um, needle felting portraits I did. A dog portrait. And I actually use this fabric. I don't know exactly what type this is. Excuse me. Because it was just something in my fabric stash. Yes, I'm also a sewer and a quilter, but I haven't touched that stuff in a while. Um, it's probably some sort of like cotton, cotton blend, I would assume. The thing about using other random fabric is that it's not wool and it doesn't felt. So a lot of times what I see with these is that you're going to be using a lot more wool because you have to use more wool because it has to go through the fabric and you stab your needle through the fabric and the wool is going to stay on this side and you're going to have to put more on top of that to tangle into the wool you've already put in instead of the wool tangling right into the fabric itself. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> if it doesn't, let me know. Um, depending on the fabric you use, I usually take a little piece and test it out. So I'll stab my needle through it. This one is kind of nice because it doesn't leave big holes. Some of the fabric I've pulled out to use, um, I'll test it and poke my needle through and it will leave a visible hole. You don't want that because your wool is just going to go right through for the most part and it's going to be real difficult. Um, reasons to use other fabric. If you have a good variety of wool felt fabric available or different types of wool backgrounds, probably don't need it. But sometimes it gives a different type of texture. Um, this one kind of has just like a kind of, there you can see, a little texture pattern, I hope. Um, so depending on the type of project you're working on, if you want the fabric um, to be seen, like you're felt in like something onto it, but it's still like visible, sometimes you might want a different type of texture. Something you can play with. Any other questions? I don't see any yet. Um, I think that's it for fabrics. Now we're going to talk a little bit about wool. Um, so we kind of covered already, you can use lots of different types of fiber. Um, mohair, alpaca, alpaca felts. Um, so the wool, where would I purchase pre-felt? So um, I have purchased pre-felt from... A couple different places. So I'm trying to remember the company. I don't remember it offhand. I have to check. I don't I don't order it that often. So it's something I order every once in a while and I forget what the name of the company is. Um Google it. Um there are a few different suppliers that sell a lot. Um, Etsy is also a great place for that kind of stuff. Um, some of the Waffle Vendor do make felt sheets. So you can always post on the group and ask about that. Paradise is pre-felt. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So anyways, wool. So there's lots of different types of wool you can use. Um, pretty much anything that felts. You just want it to be a clean, nice, um, if you're looking to buy wool, search for needle felting wool specifically. Don't just search for wool roving um, because not all wool is greatly suited for felting. It will felt differently depending on the breed. Um, I think I've purchased something from Living Felt before. I think you're right, Stephanie. Um, so yeah, different breeds felt differently. I use for needle felting, um, most of our farm blend, which is a mixture. Oh, I'm sorry. It moved a lot. 
Um, it's a mi mixture of our commercial sheep breeds for the most part. So like our Suffolk Hamp crosses, um, my Dorset crosses, a lot of those I use for felting. Um, Suffolks themselves a lot of times aren't great for felting. They're more of a down breed, um, doesn't felt as well. Um, but we have ours crossed, so it does felt pretty well. And I pick and choose what wool I use when we share. Um, it's going to probably look a little bit different than a lot of the wool used for spinning, depending on what you get. So what I use and what I sell on my kits and everything, um, it's from our farm. So it has, it has some nips in it. It has some VM in it. Um, when you pick through, you're going to see bits of VM vegetable matter here and there. There's a little piece of straw or hay or something. Um, VM is nothing to be scared about when you're using it for felting. Honestly, it doesn't matter that much as long as your wool's not, um, doesn't have tons and tons of vegetable matter in it. But wool, um, this is all some colors I just dyed here in the last week from our sheep. Um, so pretty much with wool, the biggest thing is look for needle felting wool specifically. If you're not sure, look in the descriptions, ask questions. It's better be it's better to be safe than sorry um, for wool wise. Um, also, a difference in the wool is the micron count. So that is microns is the diameter of the individual wool fiber. So, you know, this little bitty thing you can't see right here. I have a little wool fiber in my hand, the microscopic micron count. Um, so the higher the micron is, is the larger diameter. So it's opposite of felting needle scale, but the higher the micron is, the larger the micron is, um, the coarser the wool is. So the coarser, the denser it'll felt. Lower micron wool will take longer to felt. So you don't need your ultra fine, you know, ultra fine, super fine merino that you spin with um, for needle felting. It's a little bit of, um, you'll get tired of it pretty quickly. I honestly don't even know what the micron count of my sheep's wool is. But it's on the coarser side, um, but I enjoy felting with it a lot. If you have any questions about that, it's kind of like an open-ended um, question about breeds. Depends on the breed. Look it up. Um, one of the things you want to watch out for is any wool breeds that have um, like guard hairs. You don't want that. The hairs do not felt. They'll stick out of your project. Not good. So... Do, 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 let's see, anything else on my list here? Okay, so before we end tonight, how about I show you some actual felting? I know what's up, ow, I just stabbed myself. <laughs> I stabbed myself way too much. Um, I go too fast, that's probably my problem. But anyways, let me show you a little bit of felting before we get off today. Um and we will join up again next monday again at eight o'clock eastern time so the basics in needle felting it's very easy anybody can do it all you have to do is take your needle i'm gonna get my one of my triangle needles here and let me turn you down just a little bit So all you do is very gently, um, and you'll get the feel of it. The more you do it, you just push the needle in and pull it out. And you stab the wool all over the spot that you're felting. So, and actually what I did here before I get too much into it, see it's already felted a lot. So I just pulled off a little piece of my roving and I just rolled it up one end and rolled it up into a ball. Um, next week, we're gonna go over basic 3D shapes. So I'll show you how to make different shapes. But here's the basic of it. You just 
start with a little piece of wool and you stab it with your needle just like that just stab it um, when stabbing it so you don't have to push in real hard um, you don't want to go all the way through it you just when you're making a 3d object you just want to go like maybe like halfway you don't want it to come out the other side um, you have your mat here in case you do um, and for little pieces sometimes you do use the mat a little bit more but like for these you shouldn't be pushing your needle through this piece into the mat you're just felting it you turn it like if I'm gonna make um, a sphere I'm just going to keep turning my project and stabbing it all over go slow at first when you're learning so you get the feel of it feel how far you're pushing your needle into the wool when you push it in look and see how far you push it in if you can see the tip of your needle I don't know if you can see it if you see the tip there I'll push it out a little bit more for dramatic effect but if you can see your needle through your project that's going too far pull it out and get the feel of it push it in a little bit see how far you push it in see if it's the right feel or not play with it get the feeling for it don't go too fast and stab your fingers a bunch when you're first learning So just like that, it's very easy. Um, if you're making like a 2D project, I'll use this little piece of pre-felt I have here. Um, so let's, we'll just use this color because you can see it, it's my green. So when you're doing 2D felting, you wanna, less wool is better. All you need is a little bit of wool and lay it on top of your piece wherever you want it. And you just gently, push it in your needle in when you're doing 2d felting the needle should go just through the wool you're putting on and into your background piece and the tip should just barely go into the mat you're using when you're 2d felting you can tell um, how far you're pushing it in by how much your fabric sticks to your mat so if you're felting really hard and push your needle in really, really far into your mat, it's going to felt your piece onto the mat. And then it's going to be harder. It's going to stick to it. It's going to be harder to pull up. And if you do that a lot, you're going to distort your piece too, which you don't want to do. So it's just more of a gentle. Um, it's very different than 3D felting. It's very much more gentle. Um, I use the very tip of the needle only for this and I put just a little bit on my piece here and I'm starting out something new so if you guys have any questions at all so far please leave me a comment um, I will go through and respond to any questions that you guys have you can also replay this video um, if you didn't get the print out from me yet um i have these i can email them to you so if you would like one um comment so you would like one or message me um it's easier if you direct message um sheepishly made an mcs livestock um with your email and then i will email this to you so you have it um i go in depth a lot in here um a lot of what we talked about was in here um, next week we'll be talking and showing you how to make um, the basic 3D shapes and doing a little bit of 3D felting. Um, the week after that we will be doing some wool paintings. Um, so I'll show you something simple. Um, we'll see. We got a couple weeks to go but something cute maybe. Um, so We'll show, show you that, that in the next two weeks. So I hope you guys can um, join me then. Like I said, if you have any questions, leave a comment. You can also post in the event 
um, anywhere, message me. I'm here. So thank you all for watching. Um, trying to think of any last minute things. So next Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern. Um, I'm also doing, I know I should have started a week earlier because it would have been perfect timing. Um, on Saturday, this coming Saturday, the 13th at, what is it, 3 p.m. Eastern. I will be doing part one of two of the needle felting gnome tutorial. Um, this project is pretty simple. So if you're a beginner, it's a nice project to start on. If you want to wait till after the next tutorial video, it will be available for replay as well um, here on the Woolen Fiber Arts group. Or in the event, you can always find my um, videos in my events. So I'll be doing this next Saturday. We're going to be doing part one is the hat. So we'll be making the hat. It's a very cute Christmas tree holiday gnome. So thanks for joining me, everybody. Have a great night. I'm going to sign off here. Um, I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks.